Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Rajas Kaka Sungura YouTube channel. Kaka, I'm happy because reality is finally hitting the people who blindly supported the Kenya Kwanza government. I'm the happiest man because what I spoke months ago is revealing itself now. Though late, but I'm happy that yes, I saw those things early enough before anyone else could see them. Kaka, I vividly remember in my videos asking William Ruto to take the bull by its horns, face the bullet, and ask Kenyans for forgiveness. I told him that. Don't you remember? I first advised him to tell Kenyans that yes, I lied to you during the campaigns. I was looking for votes. It's high time, Kenyans of goodwill. I come before you in broad daylight asking for your kind forgiveness. That is what that was my advice. I'm happy but that the same is dawning on the very same people who were in the front line blindly saying elections were conducted free and fair. One of the people is the Archbishop Ole Sapit, Jackson Ole Sapit. At Bomas, Ole Sapit was the very first person to grab the mic. Internet never forgets. And he told Kenyans, Listen, elections were free, fair, and credible. We now have a competent president. I don't know what happened along the way. And they crossed horns with William Ruto. To an extent that now, he is turning to our side to advise William Ruto to tell Kenyans the truth. Of course, Kaka, not even a single promise from Kenya Kwanza looks realistic and achievable. Not even the Haiti mission. The Haiti mission is going to fail terribly. I'm sorry to say that. It's going to fail terribly. We only ask God to protect our soldiers. That's a story for another day. Keep my statement for future reference. You saw recently, William Ruto is telling Kenyans that in the next 10 years, we are changing Kibera slums into an estate. And I was asking myself, does this gentleman know what he's saying? Considering all factors, economical factors, resources, environment, and everything, how realistic is it that the Kibera will turn to be arrested like Runda in the next 10 years? How possible is that? How realistic is that? How practical is that? Even if you are not expert on matters of real estate or uh, economics, how realistic is Ruto's statement? He promised to create more than one million, in fact, not one million. He said, in my first one year, I will create four million jobs for young people. As we speak today, how many jobs has he created? He is now telling us, I don't know, Google will take Kenyans as first priority. 
Men, do you know how many countries are in this world that Google is operating? You think it's only Kenya that has the highest shareholders in Google? Now, Ole Sapit is telling Ruto the truth now. Ole Sapit is coming out of the bottle. Ole Sapit is now coming out of the, the pot. Ole Sapit is coming out of darkness and is meeting with light. He is speaking the language we were speaking months ago. That yes, one, Ruto is incompetent. Two, Ruto is a liar. Three, Ruto is cunning. Four, Ruto will never deliver anything tangible to Kenyans. I'm sorry to say this on behalf of so many Kenyans watching me. Now, Ole Sapit is opening up. And in his speech, I hear people celebrating. I hear people shouting. I hear people clapping. Meaning, almost the entire congregation in that particular day he was speaking were in agreement that yes, the Kenya Kwanza promises are totally unrealistic. And it's high time the Kenya Kwanza family led by the deputy Jesus to come out and say we are unable to run this government. In fact, we don't want them to even ask for forgiveness. Let them come out clear and say we are unable to run this government. Kindly, we tender our resignation. That itself will do justice to this Republic of Kenya. It is evident they should come out. Wasema tulipa kura hatukujua Kenya inaendesho na muna gani. Tulipa kura hatukujua maisha atakuwa hivi. Tulipa kura hatukujua kiti cha uraisi ni kigumu kiasi hiki. We ask for forgiveness and therefore tender our resignation from office and let any other competent person take over government. I think if they do that, at least that will serve justice to Kenyans. Ladies and gentlemen, so many Kenyans, including the people in Kenya Kwanzaa, as we speak, whether you were a diehard or you were supporting Azimio, you can agree with me on the comment section that indeed the promises made by the Kenya Kwanzaa during the campaigns are 99.999 unrealistic. Let's call a spade a spade. Let's say the reality. Say things as they, there's no need, we should lie to Kenyans in broad daylight. Can we listen to what Ole Sapiti is saying? Because the promises were so heavy that everything is sorted out. So, it is now moment to face the truth. Just come out and tell Kenyans, the promises we made are unrealistic. Now let us go to prioritization. This is our priority number one. Priority number two, put aside until we get enough, then we can now go to priority number two. But if we try to push, you know, uh, to achieve what we promised, and we all know that we have nothing to, 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 to deliver the promises, then we are going to break everybody's back. You will even break your back struggling to make happen what you know it can happen so let us just humble ourselves face the moment of truth and say this is how we look like we have to live within our means now we are going to reschedule our promises some are going to the next term or the other term because we can't deliver now the priorities for this term are this and this and that and we can be able to manage our country's affairs in a better way.